good. If we can call the meeting to order. Uh, first thing is a vote of a roll call. Just a roll call, please. <laughs> Alderman Boyd. Present. Uh, Alderman Cohn. Not present. Mr. Bradley. Present. Commissioner Boaz. Present. Commissioner Bradley. Present. Commissioner People. Present. Commissioner Reese. Not present. Commissioner Tenhouse. Here. Present. Uh, Commissioner Vines. Present. Commissioner Young. Present. And Chair Strouder. Present. And you have a quorum. Okay. So that at this point, there's no one on on call this time. Correct. Okay. Very good. Uh, with that, the first thing we have is uh, order of business is approval minutes. They were sent to you. If you have not, you should have received your packet. If not, uh, you know, add some extra packets. Uh, minutes are from May 1st meeting at 5:30. I'll entertain a motion for those if there is. It's been moved by Commissioner uh, Boyd, seconded by Commissioner Mines. If we can have a vote, please. Alderman Boyd. Okay. Commissioner Banton. Aye. Mr. Boaz. Aye. Commissioner Bradley. Aye. Mr. Peoples. Aye. Commissioner Tenhouse. Aye. Commissioner Vines. Aye. Commissioner Young. Aye. And Chair Strother. Aye. Motion passes with eight ayes and one uh, abstention. No, I passed. You got to come back to me. Oh, okay. Would you like to vote? Oh, I, I was. Aye. <laughs> I was trying to get my stuff together. You just looked like you were getting there. I, I made it. I made it just in time. You still got to circle back <laughs> one more time. <laughs> All right. With that, we have the approval of minutes for the full commission body. Thank you. Uh, we have a couple of issues for the preservation reviews, and then we have a couple of blighting studies. So, say you're going to do the preservation. Yeah. As uh, said, Don won't be here, so let's see you running the game. Thank you. The first two items on your agenda are requests. Uh, to review the decisions of the Preservation Board. I'll kind of go through each item individually, although they're both uh, from the same commissioner, along with both properties on the same uh, street and or block area, so they're tied in that way. Um, the first one is 8525 Pennsylvania. Uh, there is sort of a two-part structure uh, that was built originally in 1870 to 1880. There was some discussion during the preservation board review regarding which piece came first. Um, the staff asserts that the back end came first and is a flounder building, while the front piece came second uh, and is a vernacular shotgun home. Um, again, this was a point of debate, but either way, it's still a flounder at the rear. Um, the petitioner purchased the property began some cleanup work, including removing debris and vegetation and removing some of the illegal activities that were taking refuge in the building. Um, and he's now looking to demolish the building, and his desire is to uh, construct new veterans housing, either through wounded warriors or a project called uh, Veterans Patch Home. The applicant has attempted to get uh, funding through NOFA. However, the applicant has not awarded this funding and has not been able to secure funding um, for this project to date. So uh, a motion was made by the Conservation Board member uh, Vines, also known as Planning Commissioner Vines, um, to uphold the decision of the Director uh, of the Cultural Resources Office as a merit building and the motion passed um, by a vote of three to two. The petitioner has since requested that a Planning Commission review the decision of the Preservation Board. And so, um, for those of you who are not aware, this essentially means that you are deciding whether or not you wish to review it. It is not the actual review. If the commission chooses that, yes, you do wish to review it, then staff will prepare at the four future meeting um, the record and a presentation to review that record with you. Um, at that future meeting, the commission would determine the correctness of the provisional decision by reviewing the record as cited in light of the applicable and appropriate standards. You would be able to consider both oral and written arguments, however, no new or additional evidence could be provided or considered. Um, should you choose not to review the decision, a letter would be sent to the applicant to that effect and you would and they would have further recourse by appealing to the court. Um, if you have any questions, um, I'm happy to review them. I'll just go through a few pictures of the actual site itself. This is the 8525 Pennsylvania. Uh, first building, this is here you can see the two um, structures 
the one at the rear, whether that was first or second, was the part that was in question. Um, again, this is the Flounder building. Just, uh, some images of the damage on the southwest corner of the actual building that may have been done by equipment. Uh, this was an image that was actually taken in 2015 when there was a survey done by pro staff um, of Flounders in the city. Uh, so as you can see, I'll kind of flip back. That addition is no longer, that white uh, framed addition is no longer there. It has been removed. And these are some uh, pictures of the surrounding area. And, and this is just kind of a picture that shows how close the two houses. The next one is 8,500 that we'll talk about. They're on the same street. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And uh, in the uh, director of both research talk is also available. So the, the two issues are both parallel. They're just two items that we have to address uh, separately. Okay. Yeah. So, if there are any questions for see at this time on this particular issue? And so the question is if we are going to take up the review of the preservation board's decision. And David can just remind us what our three options are. If we take it up, if we don't, what are their options? If you if you take it up, then they have the opportunity um, to present a uh, an argument, uh, and you will also be provided uh, the full documentation from the underlying uh, matter at the Preservation Board. Uh, if you choose not to take it up, uh, then obviously it will move on if they choose to go there to circuit court. Uh, and I don't think you have a third option. No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and Commissioner Boyd, you had a question? It's a, a general question. That, like. A flounder house. I'm looking at pictures, but where does that come from? What is it exactly? One from one side to the other. Like it looks like half a house. Yeah. yeah Dan could probably speak to it. I mean, that's the idea. That's why, because flounders they lie on their side, and you only see like half the fish. Oh. Okay. That's why it's called a flounder house? It's a uh, vernacular house type that um, you can find in other cities, but seems to be more popular in St. Louis than many other cities. And we have a lot of them. They can range in size and scale uh, mm -hmm. dramatically. Some of them are two or even three stories tall. Some of them are pretty diminutive, like this one. Um, usually they're brick, but they can be framed mm -hmm. or stucco even. And I think St. Louis has more existing, you know, more surviving flounders than any other city in the country. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, is there questions or? I have a question, a couple questions. So what we have here is just a summary of what preservation all talked about with the first thing to apply, correct? There is no more information than what we have right here. So we have no detailed estimate showing anything. We have no statement from the structural engineer. We have no explanation of the hardship. We have none of that. Uh, to my knowledge, the fact you're saying. Yeah, I mean, um, the way these the commission is given the, the visual description the preservation board saw and is given the decision letter that comes to the applicant. The decision letter is also the basis for the meeting minutes. So basically the meeting minutes are going to be identical to the to this. Um, there are other items that traditional that typically are not have not been shown to the and unless the review is off. Um, so if the commission decides to review the item, then there'll be a transcript and any and all items sent into evidence, what have you. But this is the way the um, process has been structured with the planning commission that um, this is the information provided and it gives a good summary. Um, our, our meeting with the community said and the point of view they had. 
and uh, but they're finding in fact there for the finding of facts were by the plan by the preservation board as well as the uh, conclusions of law and the motion that was approved by the board. So in my opinion, you know, reviewing the documents here, our to take this on, I think we would have to see that we could possibly find something from what was presented to you to overturn your decision with the same information. And my personal opinion is looking at what you presented to us, I would agree with what you did. Any other questions or comments? I will just say since I um, I guess I was party to some of the motions really on both these, but um, uh, the the thing that really got me, aside from the fact these are historically significant goals anyway you slice it, um, they, the, his plan for replacement was very vague, very uncertain. Um, it was it was my gut feeling, I know it's not for the record, but it was my gut feeling that the, that site was been vacant for however long, a long time. Um, and they just didn't make a really, uh, you know, compelling case for why that needs to come down, what the urgency is. Um, so I just, that was my reason for the motion. Uh, as long as it's within the purview of this information we have, yes. So, so were the properties acquired for this purpose, or it was in ownership and that the owners decided to do something different? Do you recall? The properties were acquired by, acquired by the owner, I believe, expressly with the hope he would demolish the building and we built it on the site. But funding was enough. There was a question. It was an issue about funding. And and if, if we choose not to take it up, he still has the option to go a legal route. Um, if that's the deal, you know, so if this is not the end all, the be all, it's just matter of legal. So. I guess my view is always that if you want to build something, why don't you buy it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So is there a motion to do the same? Or? I don't know how to word this. I mean that we uh, um, deny hearing any new uh, or bringing this before this body for further scrutiny. Is that the proper language, Dave? Can we think? Okay, that, that's quite clear. All right. We just want to be sure. Then at that point, can we have a roll call vote, please? Alderman Boyd? Aye. Commissioner Banton? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Boas? Aye. Commissioner Bradley? Aye. Commissioner Peoples? Aye. Commissioner Tenhouse? Aye. Commissioner Vines? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. Chair Strouder? Aye. Motion passes. All present voting? Aye. Okay, so that is 40-19. Now we look at 41-19, which is the same issue. It's a simplified different site. Thank you. Yes. Same owner, same. Uh, same block. Yeah, same block. Uh, so the site plan is, or the um, map is for up for you now, you can see 8500 is just um, north of the site we just reviewed. Um, that structure was built, um, I'll put it up for you here, circa 1900. So the purchased the property again. Uh, same thing, began some cleanup work, um, removing the green vegetation and legal activities, um, and is now looking to demolish it for the construction of veteran housing. Uh, however, um, has applied for funding, has not been able to secure any funding, and um, it was reviewed by the preservation for March, um, at which time a motion was passed by a vote of four to one. Um, the commissioner has since requested the planning to review the decision, and the same request is before you this evening, whether or not the commission will take review. Um, this, this building is a little bit different than the last one. It is one uh, structure alone, um, and it is uh, a shotgun house and it's some really um, ornate detailing. So we have the rear and the side. Uh, and then these are just some adjacent site photos again of the housing on the that, that is it. Uh, if you have any other questions about this one in particular, we're happy. 
again, any questions at this point? I'd like to just back on my comment. I want you to repeat it. Okay, with that, I'll entertain any motion, please. I move to reject the appeal to the Planning Commission. The previous role. Any objection to the previous role? Hearing none, the role accepted for that item 4119. And again, they have their own recourse, a recourse option uh, outside of the Planning Commission. Uh, with that, I think two kind of wrong then. Yeah. Uh, we'll cover what are you looking at? 3819 first one? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, member of the Commission. This is a CAP 99 lighting study in the redevelopment plan for the um, CAP Avenue, the North 14th Street, Valley Street, Moving Street, and Redevelopment Area. Uh, the uh, site is a very large one. It's a little over 30 acres in size. It consists of four parcels, and it's bounded by those same four streets: Cass Avenue on the north, and Fallon Street, I'm sorry, uh, 14th Street on the east, Fallon Street on the south, and Bowman Street uh, on the west. It's located in the uh, Car Square neighborhood, mm -hmm. a few blocks east of the uh, the NGA site. The existing use is Preservation Square, uh, which is a 675-unit apartment complex, and most of you may know it better by its original name, of Fountain Place. Uh, the proposed use as part of this redevelopment plan is a $100 million four-phase redevelopment project. It calls for the demolition or the renovation of all of the existing buildings in the, uh, in the complex and the construction of some new buildings uh, in addition to uh, some infrastructure improvements related to that. Uh, there's a number of funding sources uh, that are being used for the development uh, project. One of the notable ones is a Choice Neighborhood Implementation Grant that was granted by the uh, United States Department of Housing and Development a few years or so ago. The uh, prospective developer is McCormick Baron Salazar, uh, which built the complex uh, about 35 to 40 years or so ago. Um, Emily Bernstein of McCormick Bear is here tonight along with some of her associates and uh, she'll be available, although we'll be able to the questions if you have. So this is an aerial photo of the uh, existing complex and uh, as you can see, uh, most of the housing is located along the perimeter of the four streets as well as the two interior cul-de-sac streets, Cochrane Place, Preservation Place, as well as uh, 16th Street. And currently, the only vehicular entrance into the complex is here at 16th Street and uh, that's that. Um, uh, these are some photos of the, uh, of the buildings, uh, all of which are either two or st three stories in, uh, in height. Um, and uh, here's first throughout the complex are some off-street parking lots. Uh, the complex is generally in pretty good condition. You'll find a, a few cases of some boarded up doors and windows, but there are very few and far between. Uh, many of the porches need to be replaced, and there are some infrastructure improvements that need some attention, uh, namely uh, uh, street lights, uh, sidewalks, things of that nature. But overall, for a complex of this age, it's, it's in relatively good shape. These are some of the amenities within the complex, the leasing office, and uh, some of the recreational facilities that are currently there. This is a site plan that was submitted by uh, McCormick Barron, uh, and it shows uh, the current configuration of both the uh, buildings as well as the, uh, the streets, interior streets, and also shows the, the four phases as to how this redevelopment project will, uh, would be redeveloped. So the first phase would be the uh, northwest corner of the complex uh, at Cass and, um, and Hogan. And this is a, uh, a site plan for how the, uh, the site would be, uh, would be redeveloped. Uh, so the pink buildings here, <laughs> we're pink on my, on my slide, we've changed colors. The light colored building footprints here are the buildings that will be um, renovated. The dark orange buildings are those that would be newly constructed. Uh, when the uh, four phases of the redevelopment project are done, there would be a total of 555 units um, of either all new or renovated housing. So that would be a slight uh, decrease from the 675 that's currently there. 
In addition to that, there will be some uh, significant street uh, reconfiguration. I pointed out Cochrane Place and, and other basement place, the two cul-de-sac streets. Those cul-de-sac streets, or those cul-de-sacs, would be removed at both Cohen and North 14th Street. Uh, the entrance here at 16th and O'Fallon would be reopened, and a brand new street uh, would be constructed uh, at the western end of the complex. So uh, basically, the, uh, the complex uh, would be less self-contained and be integrated back into the city's uh, street room. This is the phase one area. Uh, again, the uh, pink buildings indicate those that would be um, renovated. The uh, blue buildings are those that would be um, demolished, replaced with other buildings. Uh, so, for example, and this is not this is one that wouldn't be replaced. This large building here would be demolished in order to make way for the extension of Cochrane Place to the uh, um, we just two photographs of the uh, cul-de-sacs along the uh, preservation place. Uh, the one on the right uh, is facing 14th Street. That building would be demolished. The street would be extended to 14th Street. And that will uh, be very, very useful if the uh, proposed uh, north side, south side uh, light rail route uh, comes into fruition that would allow uh, better pedestrian access to uh, the light rail route and uh, some of the nearby stations. The uh, photo on the left shows the <coughs> entrance at 16th Street, which is currently blocked off. Those barricades would be removed. And the photo on the right shows an existing parking lot that would be replaced by the, uh, the new North South Street. So some significant uh, transportation improvements are, are being proposed as part of the development project. The uh, city strategic land use plan designates the entire area as a neighborhood preservation area, shown here in yellow. In addition uh, to that, uh, the redevelopment area is located within uh, two uh, neighborhood plans that were adopted by the Planning Commission. The, uh, the first is the Downtown Development Action Plan, which was approved, adopted by the Planning Commission back in 1999. It calls for that area to be revitalized as part of a larger area called um, Murphy Park, basically in this area here. And the second neighborhood plan was a plan for the neighborhoods of the fifth ward, adopted back in 2002, and there was no recommendation for this particular area. Uh, so in terms of comments, uh, this redevelopment plan is in conformity with the city's strategic land use plan and those two adopted plans. Uh, there is no eminent domain. Uh, tax abatement is being provided uh, for 15 years at 75%, and staff is recommending approval. I'd be happy to answer any questions, and uh, Ms. Bernstein and her associates uh, in the public area are here as well. I'm sure we're going to have some questions, so let me just ask first, uh, is there a letter from the alderwoman in support of this? There is not. My understanding is that the uh, public baron has uh, attempted to uh, speak with all the person. I'm not sure if that has come to fruition or not. I've spoken to her. She's very aware of the request. We are anticipating that she will be supportive and provide the letter, but she has not yet. Okay. With that, Emily, I'll give you an opportunity to address the committee before questions come up to see if you can preempt this. <laughs> really? I'm happy to. Okay. So, um, okay, so how many of you guys are um, uh, familiar with the Choice Neighborhood Awards? Okay, so the Choice Neighborhood Awards was given to the city in 2016. Um, we are slow to make progress given everything that happens with tax credits in the state. Phase one was awarded a federal tax credit award in October of 18. Um, the city and all of the departments, the city have been deeply supported. The idea here is basically that this would free taxes as they stand on the property to date, which could be hugely beneficial to us. Um, in addition to what we're seeing in the construction market, there's a lot that is proposed out here, which was mentioned. Um, a big part of this project is opening up the streets, connecting it with the street grid. Um, the one way in, one way out has been a huge issue, particularly related to crime. Um, that's adding costs here. 
there's a lot of underground plumbing. You, you, you've heard it all before, but basically, um, and then the last thing that I would just say is that Urban Strategies is the people partner and the neighborhood partner on this grant in conjunction with the city of St. Louis. They have been out working with the 675 residents uh, in robust human capital development, community supported services since 2016, and some of that cost is also programmed in our operating budgets over the life of the project. So it's just basically all together, you know, this, this tax abatement for the entire property would really help us put into place what we have planned for this program for development. Okay. Um, I'll let the commissioners start first. I'll start on this side. Uh, Commissioner Bradley, any questions? No nope. questions, Commissioner Hill. I, I um, get lost in this neighborhood quite a lot for home daycare, actually, and it's hard to get out of this neighborhood. So I really appreciate you guys looking at opening the streets as a major benefit to the neighborhood. You should go to plans. Um, I, I have been at plans, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, and I saw a little bit about why the rehab was there, but I was hoping you could talk to that a little bit more about why it's needed, and also if you could talk to um, just displacement of families that might be in the neighborhood. Sure. Um, you just when you say rehab, you're not talking about the new on the green rehab and new construction. You're just talking about overall the project. Yeah. Um, really, it's simply that. Um, it's existing conditions that are persisting specifically in this neighborhood in Preservation Square that are not seen in adjacent neighborhoods, really not seen at Murphy, not seen across the street, and we feel really confident that the rehab to the you know to the, the improvement to the housing itself, in addition to all of sort of the streets and the the grid and the fabric of the community, will make an immense difference. Go. I would you said existing conditions. Just the crime, the the reality of living in preservation. Um, and as for relocation, um, it's a it's a multi sort of tiered situation. Um, you know, the URA applies here, um, and it is an existing mixed income development. It was built mixed income in the 80s, so. There are half Section 8 half contracts that on 342 units under the Choice Neighborhood Grant Program, those 342 individuals are eligible to receive tenant protection vouchers. They can take those vouchers either temporarily and have first right to return, or they can take them and remain out if they would like. We are hoping that as many people who want to come back will come back. Those as individuals who are eligible to receive a TPV or who are not have the right to stay on property during, we're doing basically this phase, so we're moving people, we're making you know, threatening and moving people on site if that's their preference. It has been for a lot of these residents at home, right, you want to stay at home. Um, we're also making as available other McCormick Barron properties um, for temporarily relocation, and then all residents who are at property at time of grant are basically based on their subsidy level are eligible for different relocation benefits, but everyone's receiving relocation benefits. I assume you guys are communicating that to the... As much, as much as possible. I mean, it, it really has been difficult, but there have been an immense amount of resident meetings. Our management staff really well worked on it. Urban Strategies has offices out there, so they're meeting with residents. And then, um, I don't know if you guys have ever worked with development resource partners, but they're the relocation agency who's working out on site. Everyone's getting the reply. You know, like I don't know if you've heard of kids like it is or their legal notices that everyone's getting and then we're going above and beyond. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's really not, a, I guess, a statement. I, I feel that it is important to open this up because I've, I've been here before, like visiting people, and that one way in, one way out. To me, I'm just saying I didn't feel comfortable. I mean, I went to visit somebody, but it's an uneasy feeling, and um, I don't know. Just I don't know. I think with the the, this new development, the way you have it designed, will be much better to what it is now. That's just my comment. Sure. Talk to me a little bit about your envision of this 
community event lawn. What does that look like, for real? Because <laughs> I'm imagining in my mind it looks like a stage. <laughs> Number eight. In my mind, it kind of looks like what kind of house looks like now at Alcera. If there's a walking path oh. that's really utilized around, around the perimeter. It's, so in here, it's shown adjacent to a splash pad. I don't know if you're familiar with Turner Park. It's sort of right on the side. But it, so it's sort of a similar use. To be completely honest, it hasn't been fully designed yet. Um, so it could look different when it comes to fruition, but um, it's also some, you know, it's something that we want the eyes, eyes and ears to be on. We want it to be something that residents can really make use of. We've talked, um, you know, it really, it really connects nicely north and connects up with the trestle. If the north-south Metrolink line really does come down 14th, it's a great amenity. Um, it's something that's helping us. MSC has been supportive of this, and we're part of the grant application, the CNI application, and part of how we're getting those stormwater improvements into the site. Um, that's sorry, it's kind of vague, but it's you know. So speaking of MSD, talk to me a little about this bioswale. Where is that located? So it's the really the MSD. I don't see it on the. Are you looking at the, the logo? It's the number seven. Uh, no, it's number. There's a number seven it's in the bioswale. I can't find it on the site plan. And I know that's a lot of density to not have something like that. <laughs> I remember we had a commission meeting a, a month or two ago, and they went underground. I forget it was the third ward or something, but it was kind of a dense project like this, and yeah. it was very creative on how they did the, the runoff water. Yeah. Where, where do you see it in that space? So it it'll be a big part of um, every phase. It'll be sort of broke in with the civil engineer's design. It'll be part of the rain garden that are put in for the vegetation. Yeah, I, I know what it is. And I know what it does. I guess I'm asking where is it? Because it's listed on here as number seven. I'm just trying to find it. It's not shown. It's not shown. No. I'm happy to find out and let, and let you know. I don't know. Okay. I'm kind of curious. Um, also, um, I tend to have reservations about supporting stuff that my colleagues haven't signed on to. Uh, Politic-wise, I don't want to get sideways with anybody. And I'm curious. Sounds a wonderful project. I wish you tell Ben Ben he owes me a phone call in four weeks. Take it and bring it in my neighborhood. I'll sign off on it. I'd be happy to. Um, but something is going on that the older woman has not signed on to this project. And it makes me nervous about supporting it without having the officer to support it. Because what you're going to ask for, from what I've heard, is 15 years tax abatement, what was it, 75%. If you don't get that, this is not going to work. Um, and so I will probably want to table this when it all, all the talking gets done so that we make sure we pass this with the understanding that it's something that the office is going to support. So there's no need to set a problem up for failure, you know. And we could pass it and you work it out. I'm just kind of have anxieties about what's really going on if the other person wouldn't sign off right now. But I'm in full support of that idea. All right. Commissioner Thales? No questions at this time. All right. Commissioner? Yeah, so um, I remember reading somewhere, and I apologize if this is the wrong project, but the rehabilitation, uh, the rehab that you're doing for some of the existing buildings that you're reorienting orienting the front mm -hmm. to yeah. the street instead of the interior, so that's what's happening with most of is it. Is that the existing way for most of these buildings, and that's what you're doing for pretty much all of these rehabs, or is it just a select few that are happening to? There will be no more buildings that are not oriented along okay. the street. Okay. Yeah. And, and so that extension of the street where you hear in phase one where you see some of those buildings, this is a new extension of the street here. Sure. Yeah, so all the buildings will be located. 
And will the new buildings being constructed be of about the same size and scale of the existing buildings? Yeah, in, in, in phase one, yes. Um, we're anticipating higher density in some of the future phases, but there, um, phase one is in that purple line in the top left, and yes, they are all of the similar. Yeah. And material palette about yes. the same too? Yes, so very same much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, just curious, and just the one block in the middle to the east, it seems like those new buildings are spaced out more than every, everyone else. Is there a particular reason for it that? Was based, so it was simply based on the determination of, you know, the, the engineering team and the, the GC team and the architect of the fact that they felt those buildings in that block just didn't work as, you know, they were in worse condition and that that was a good location for new construction. Okay. I know, I agree with you, they do sort of look a little bit more space, but I, I don't know if it's an optics thing or if it's just simply is because it's all new construction and there's no rehab um, based in. I, I well, on some blocks you have, you know, yeah. five or six buildings, um, I think you have three, so more space in between them. Okay. Just, just curious. Um, but echo my colleague's sentiments on opening up the street grid. I think that's, that's fantastic and reorienting and engaging the rest of the neighborhood around it, I think, is uh, fabulous. Richard Bosch, um, you, you answered most of mine. Um, what year was it originally built? The early 80s. Early 80s. Early 80s. Early 80s. Early 80s. So the new construction that you're going to be building here. Um, so the design is it going to really mirror very much what we're doing with the early style? Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just for all era, I'm just curious that you're using, you know, a more contemporary approach. In phase one, um, there's a fair amount of rehab in addition to the new construction, so it's it's sort of bringing more um, depth. I, I mean, I suspect you can sort of picture the buildings and there were pictures that are really flat. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of bringing more depth to the facade in addition to improving all of the interior guts and, and yeah, making it more modern, adding on those modern features that, you know, sort of what you see more at North Era, um, which, like, whether it's a balcony or just sort of all those things around the front of the building, and then making the, the, the rehab and the new construction really shine out a couple of quick questions from the chair. One is, what's your current occupancy rate in that property? It's, um, it's certainly, it's pretty low right now. 55%. 55%. Okay. And the, some of that has been anticipating the redevelopment in phase one, but then there's, yeah. Okay. Because there's a net loss of 120 units based off the map here, and there's no what what's happening to that that opportunity there. Uh, if you're 65 percent, then you're looking 10 uh, percent. So what you're not seeing here, and you should understand, is that the last phase of this choice neighborhood grant is the complete renovation of the brewery apartments, which is adjacent and right by the NGA. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, is that it's, it's not a loss of units, that um, about 70 of the half units will actually be ported, mm -hmm. and they will be moved, and residents who currently receive that subsidy will have the opportunity to move to that property or take their subsidy and move to another property. And we've been working closely with HUD multifamily to make sure that that's something that can take place. I see what you're saying, though. You're saying that the loss, you're doing a map of 655 to 565. Right, and, yeah, and that's leaving yeah. 170 different families that are not having the opportunity but you're saying they will have an opportunity in the brewery apartment with the voucher, uh, the TPD, but does that, it, how does that impact them financially? How does the TPD work financially on a newer cost? It's the same level of subsidy that they're currently receiving. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a side question. Nobody else is my note. Any other questions at this point for, for our representative? You didn't make, didn't make her sweat? Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't entertain any more. I'm not sweating. <laughs> <laughs> you never let no sweat, but see you sweat. <laughs> Who was the last <laughs> Listen, Mr. Chairman, I like to ask that we table this until, I like to make more sense that we table this until we get um, support from the other person. So that's your, that's my motion. Okay. I second. Second it. And it's been moved and second that we table this, this uh, motion until the further, until the next meeting, which at that time we would hope that a uh, letter from the R uh, would be attached. And then without discussion, we can then either up or down the approval of the of the study. Call for a vote, please. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Commissioner Banton. Aye. Commissioner Boaz. Aye. Commissioner Bradley. Aye. Commissioner Peoples. Aye. Commissioner Tenhouse. Aye. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Young. Reluctantly aye. Chris <laughs> Aye. And the motion to table passes. Okay. So does that mean that the negative opportunity simply means that we want to be in conformance with the, with the older woman uh, to be sure that, and obviously, like Donovan said, out of respect and, and future plans, we want to be sure that it's in good order. And when you, for the next one, it's just a matter of putting it forward and either accepting or uh, denying at that point. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. So, with that, that moves us into the 4219 Teresa Avenue uh, study. <laughs> Who's doing that one? Uh, I am. Okay, one. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is a, another Chapter 99 study redevelopment plan. It's for the uh, 72812 uh, South Teresa Avenue area. The site is uh, about one and a half acres in size. It consists of uh, two parcels located in the 700 to 800 blocks of uh, Teresa Avenue in the Mill Creek Valley. Uh, it's an industrial area in the uh, Midtown neighborhood. The uh, site is also located within the boundaries of the St. Louis Midtown 353 redevelopment area. It's a very large redevelopment plan that was established uh, roughly three or four years or so ago, about 400 uh, acres in size. Um, so it's also located within that existing redevelopment plan. The existing uses are uh, two industrial buildings, as you can see, one of which is vacant. Um, uh, and what's being proposed is the demolition of those two industrial buildings and the construction of a $26 million six-story mixed-use building, and that building would uh, include uh, 10,000 square feet of ground floor commercial space and 110 apartments. The uh, prospective developer is Pier Property Group, which is also renovating um, two buildings adjacent to the redevelopment area currently. Um, the firm owns uh, both of the parcels. Uh, Mr. Michael Hamburg, uh, who's the founder of that firm, is here tonight and will be available if you have any questions for him. As I mentioned, uh, this redevelopment area, which is shown in red, is located within a larger Chapter 353 redevelopment plan. And that 353 redevelopment plan extends um, all the way up to off this map to Forest Park. Uh, Forest Park Avenue and southward to about Interstate 44. So everything you see on that map virtually is included within that um, redevelopment area. There's a lot of development that's been going on in that redevelopment area, uh, primarily west of, of uh, South Grand Boulevard, some of which is not on this map. Uh, the city boundary is basically over here. Uh, National Armory, which is being redeveloped, is here. Large, uh, Mixed-use complex is being proposed here at Grand and Shoto, and of course the uh, the new St. Louis University Hospital building is, is being constructed there, just off of that. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Not much stuff in Mill Creek Valley, which is this area here, roughly between Shoto and I-64, um, where much of the uh, land is used for industrial purposes. Um, but I should also point out that uh, the redevelopment area, again, shown in the red, is very uh, close within walking distance of the uh, Grand Metro station. Uh, 
These are a couple photos of the, uh, the Bacon Industrial Building located at uh, 720 South Teresa. Uh, again, this building is Bacon. Uh, these are some photos of the second building, uh, which is mostly one story, but it does have some multi-floor additions to it. Um, that building is partially occupied, and uh, I've been told by the developer it will be vacated within, uh, within uh, 30 days or so. Uh, I mentioned there are two uh, redevelopment projects that are currently underway adjacent to the redevelopment area. This is the first one. It's called Steel Coat Lofts. It's named after a, uh, a large paint manufacturer that used to be located there. And uh, that building is uh, being converted into uh, 33 apartments currently and should be done very shortly, I understand. The second building is called Steel Coat Crossing, and that is uh, uh, again underway, and it's uh, converting a, uh, a building into uh, some ground floor commercial as well as 15 apartments. In terms of uh, adjacent uh, properties, uh, most of the uh, businesses in the area, as I mentioned, are industrial uses. There are some service-oriented businesses there as well. Uh, the photo on the left gives you a sense of the uh, streetscape there along South Teresa. It's uh, not particularly inviting. Uh, the street is in very poor shape. Uh, there are no sidewalks, and it's sort of like the Wild West. Uh, anything goes there. And these are some, some of the uh, businesses that are located on the other side of trees and from the redevelopment area. Uh, next couple slides are some drawings that were submitted by the, uh, the developer. The building will be located here along Teresa Avenue. North is oriented in this direction. Uh, so the building will be located here uh, corner of Teresa and Tappan uh, with some surface parking uh, adjacent to it. And the two buildings that are currently being renovated are, are uh, immediately adjacent to the uh, redevelopment area. This is a rendering looking northeastward towards the uh, downtown skyline. The proposed building uh, could be called Mill Creek Flats, is it? Um, is this gray building here, six story building again, parts of it are, are five stories with ground floor commercial. And the two adjacent buildings that are currently being renovated are located back here behind the uh, gray building. This is another view located in a different direction. So this is the proposed building, the five story building under renovation, and the three story building. And the renovation, and those are the two buildings that are currently being renovated. The uh, city strategic land use plan uh, designates this site as a business industrial development area, shown here in, in gray. And normally, residential uses aren't allowed in the business industrial area. Um, but in this case, uh, it, it could be by virtue of the, uh, the adjacency agreement included as part of the city strategic land use plan. And that basically states that if a proposed use is allowed in an adjacent uh, strategic land use category, and I'm specifically referring here to the opportunity area here shown in purple, that that proposed use is allowed in an adjacent strategic land use category, and residential uses are in fact allowed in an opportunity area, that the planning commission could determine that the Redevelopment plan is in conformity with the city strategic plan. So that's a little bit of a judgment call there on your part. This redevelopment plan, unlike most of the others that you typically see, and you may have read it in the resolution, does not provide for either the use of eminent domain or tax abatement. Uh, but it does provide a different type of incentive that is increasingly being used um, under Chapter 99 plan, and that's a sales tax exemption for construction materials that are used in this particular development project. And this would be limited to the building that is being proposed, not the two buildings that are under construction or under renovation because they're not part of this redevelopment area. Um, then with regards to tax abatement, as I mentioned, this is located within a large Chapter 353 redevelopment plan what's called the St. Louis Midtown 353 Redevelopment Plan. Uh, there's a board uh, that uh, authorized the use of 20 years of tax abatement for this particular project. Uh, the first 10 years would be at 85%, and the last 10 years would be at 40%. So 
So that decision has been made, made by that redevelopment corporation outside the purview of, of the Planning Commission. Um, so staff is recommending approval of the uh, Chapter 99 Bloody Study. Uh, Mr. Hanberg of Peer Property Group is, is here as well. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Dale Rousset of, uh, of SLDC is, uh, uh, is here as well. If you have any um, questions with regards to the um, sales tax exemption. Well, we'll let Mr. Haver address first, and then, then if we have to, we'll let Dale talk. <laughs> well, thank you. That was a, a great summary, uh, and thanks for all of your consideration. Um, yeah, I mean, we're really excited about this kind of being the third phase uh, of this project. Um, you know, there's a lot of industrial history and really just a lot of history uh, generally uh, with this neighborhood. So uh, we're very excited to be almost done with the first phase uh, of the historic side of it and underway on the second phase. Um, a lot of our design for the third phase was figuring out ways to kind of incorporate the, the history um, of the neighborhood and the buildings we're working on uh, immediately east of here um, with new construction. Um, so on the design of the building, you might have noticed there's a section in the middle that's um, glass and the building kind of steps down. Um, and that was really to not obstruct the view um, of the historic buildings behind it. Um, the materials we're using on the outside of the building, um, metals and glass to kind of honor um, a little bit of the, the railroad um, history and the industrial nature of, of this site again. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I'd love to open it up to questions. That's pretty important. All right. Let's start off with Commissioner Bradley. Um, Lee Silver. Um, we, there's no lead certification uh, on this site. Okay. Um, how big will the apartment be? There's 100 of them on the front Yeah, so we're um, we're roughly 82 uh, percent one bedrooms and studios. Uh, so our total, you know, are smaller units. Um, our average uh, size uh, across the whole property is about 650 um, square feet. Um, and, and one other comment that I forgot to mention as I'm looking at this, uh, if you can go back to the site plan. Um, another thing that we're doing as part of our plan is obviously adding a lot of infrastructure along Teresa, sidewalks, and paving. Um, but Gratchet here um, is actually closed off um, right here currently. Um, these streets are actually private, Edwin and Gratchet, and Pavement are right here, uh, Teresa and Public. But um, our plan is to actually open Gratchet back up uh, to be able to provide access um, all the way around the site um, a little bit easier. I just forgot to mention that. So if I'm just real quick, parking, you have to walk across the... So parking, we've got um, more, we've got about one-to-one -one, uh, in the building in a structured parking garage. Okay. Um, and then there's additional spaces on that surface lot. Um, a lot of the thought there is to service the retail, um, as well as the potential eventual trailhead parking if the Arch to Park Trail ends up uh, running by the site. Okay. Right. Commissioner Young? Commissioner Peep? No question. Um, comment on one, I like the design of that building where you say you can kind of see over. I thought that was kind of a neat design. But I did want to ask Dale, um, I'm just a little confused with the 353 and the 99. I know the 353 is this broad, this whole geography, right? right? And that's where, is it St. Louis you? Correct. Okay, so they own that and they decide who gets the tax abatement. Then how does a 99 come into that? Or is it outside the 353? No, it's, it's an overlay over the 353, the 99. So, so the slide said there's no tax abatement, but there is well, tax there's abatement. No tax abatement. Oh, there's no tax under the 99. Oh, there's no tax under the 99. So the tax abatement is for the tax exempt? The, the reason we're putting a Chapter 99 overlay is to allow for the sales tax exemption Okay. Because uh, that, that can occur only in a Chapter 99 area. Okay. But that says first 10 years of tax abatement. Well, that's, that's under the 353. She's, she's Midtown 353 up there? Yeah, but you, it suggests that there's no tax abatement for this project. That's kind of misleading, isn't it? No. The, the second bullet point says it's referring to the Chapter 99, that there is no use of eminent domain or tax Just abatement. within the 99. Within the 99. Right. But the project is receiving tax abatement. Correct. Yeah, but but, but the, fourth, the fourth bullet point says St. Louis yeah. Midtown 353 yeah. Redevelopment Plan provides for the use of 20 years of tax abatement. 
Gotcha. With the terms underneath that. But it's still misleading when you get through talking. Okay, because it makes it seem like there's no tax abatement for the project. But I get it. It's no tax abatement within the 99. Uh, under the 99. Under the 99. Uh, but the sales tax exemption, that's within the 99, right? Correct. So what is the value of the sales tax exemption? Well, the sales tax exemption deals with the materials to be right. used to construct the project. Mm -hmm. And under that arrangement, the LCRA would uh, uh, wind up with the title to the property. Mm -hmm. And because the LCRA is a tax-exempt entity, sales tax will not be paid on those. And then after the project's done, we'll unwind it and the property will go back to the developer. What's the value of that? I mean, it kind of depends. We we sort of looked at it, and, and the overall development cost is $26 million. We're roughly saying maybe a third of that might be materials. Maybe that's high. So say, say $10 million might be building materials. And then you, you pay uh, sales tax on that $10 million worth of building materials. As you know, most of those building materials would be built or would be acquired outside of the city because most of the things you're buying for this aren't uh, vendors that are within the city. So it, it's really we boiled it down that if you if you look at it, then say maybe a third, and that's probably generous of the of the supplies we bought in the city, and you'd be paying the sales tax. But then, of course, as you know, the city only gets a third or so of the sales tax. The rest of it goes somewhere else. So the bottom line, as we went through on this project, is we estimated that the cost to the city might be a little over $100,000. The cost to the city to do In other that. words, the sales tax that the city would not be getting from the project would be around $100,000. Yeah. But that, that, that that's not what the sales tax is in. Yeah, that's the sales. That involves a lot of assumptions. Right. And, uh, but at the end of the day, you, you said it's about it's a third of the, the, the project. Construction is about a third. No, no, we're just, assuming the building materials, materials would be about, you take off the soft costs yeah. and other things and the actual materials. I, I see the... The developer shaking his head, maybe. I mean, yeah, yeah. That, that's a real guess, but uh, you know, that that's not. Seems like that's about maybe what. And, and I'm not gonna hold you to it. I'm just sitting here trying to think, and I understand the city because all the most materials are bought somewhere else, unless you are buying them from Home Depot and Lowe's within the city of St. Louis. But I'm still trying to capture, you know, and weigh this value of this tax exemption. So if it's ten million dollars. That you're going to save. No, 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 no. It, so it, it's the tax paid on a ten million dollars. So if you have an eight percent tax rate, uh, you know, got you. Okay. Million bucks of a benefit to the project. Okay. Um, now, this does not come back to the board loan. This ninety nine. Yes, it does. It does. does. Okay, the three fifty three doesn't, but the ninety nine. Ninety nine comes back. The nine. Okay. Like all the other, all the ninety nine. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm just trying to in fact, balance and keep all this in my head right. Here. This is an Alderman Davis's ward. Yeah. He's already said okay to introduce this bill this yeah. Friday, so it'll be before the Board of Aldermen this Friday. Okay. So, yeah. No problem. I'm just trying to figure out how I can use this in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to come up my neighborhood and do all these tricks. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a question that might be kind of like long, but um, it's about the plans, or I guess like the vision for the commercial space on the first floor, and to preface that, um, I get the, the planning recommendation about the adjacency rule um, for putting residential here. Um, at the same time, you know, 33 apartments and 15 apartments is one thing, but like putting 158 people in this spot that's primarily industrial. Um, and the places that you can walk to and stuff being somewhat limited. I know that there's nearby developments happening soon, but is there a vision for what that commercial space will be used for to support some of those residents? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I have a couple of things there. It's a good question. I mean, I think, A, uh, both of these buildings, you know, represent an acre and a half of, of space in this neighborhood that will be vacant in 30 days. Uh, so, I mean, in terms of adding 150 people here, I think, you know, this pocket is in desperate need of more foot traffic and better streets and kind of reestablishing a grid that's been, mm -hmm. that's been lost. Um, 
But you know, for us, it's also uh, I'm a big advocate of, of having you know retail, entertainment, living, walkable um, space, and I think that's what a lot of renters these days are looking for, especially in a smaller um, unit like this. So um, 33 units didn't justify um, enough demand to really add substantial retail. Even adding 15 didn't. So really, it was this last piece needed to happen to be able to um, have retail as well as amenitize uh, the other buildings with pool, fitness center, things that you need when you've got 100 people. So um, that's kind of why it's not there yet and why we wanted to put it in this building. Um, but kind of the broader question, um, I've also acquired um, several parcels of land and I'm under contract to acquire a couple others uh, on the sites immediately west of this site um, with plans to kind of connect that with some retail uh, more on Grand. Um, part of that is waiting to see plans develop on the west side of Grand with the 14-acre site that SLU um, mm -hmm. is, is selling right now for a yeah. use project and trying to figure out how do we complement that best on our side of the street and work with what SLU wants. So, okay. so long term, yeah, I think there'd be a plan to add substantially more retail west of here um, and probably stop at the 160 apartments in this neighborhood. Okay, thanks. Yes, so uh, first of all, I want to say in, in many ways, I'm more excited about your development here um, and it's sort of incrementalism and use of historic buildings than I am of the big new project across the street that's supposedly going to be built all at once. I think, you know, especially in this area, which is very industrial, um, I think it takes sort of a courageous developer to see the opportunity there and I wish there were more folks like you in, all throughout the city. Um, question about just sort of the site plan. It, it, it looked like this new building was sort of covering up the front entrance to your other buildings, or are they oriented in the other direction? Yeah, they're oriented. Um, so, you know, this is Papin as you come down, and then this is Edwin. Um, so this smaller Steel Cove Crossing building, uh, you actually enter in um, off of Papin uh, for the residential traffic. The first floor of this building is actually uh, retail commercial space and that entrance is off of Edwin. Okay. Um, there's a parking lot in between that services this building. And then the Steel Coat Loft building, um, the kind of guest entrance is off of Edwin. Um, the residential entrance is through uh, this parking lot and gated uh, entrance back here. Okay. So really these were kind of the back sides of the building and this new building will have an entrance uh, kind of right through here where this parking lot is so that these two buildings, residents, can enter in this building and share, you know, this pool deck and rooftop deck and um, all of the features in the new building. But that was also the big push for reopening Gratchet here as well, um, was to provide another way to get into the parking lot for Steel Code Loft. And uh, Steel Code is opening when? Uh, Steel Code Loft should be done by the end of the month. Um, so we just started uh, kind of pushing the leasing button a little harder, yeah. launching a website, and um, so we're starting to get a little bit of a timeline for this ground up project. Yeah. Um, with where we are in design, I would anticipate uh, being able to, well, and getting the, the final uh, tenant out of this building. We should be able to demolish uh, these buildings, um, I would say, in July, and then our plan would be to start construction on the new end of August, early September. Um, and then it's about a 14-month construction window uh, to complete it. Great. Good questions. Commissioner um, Bynes? I also want to echo Commissioner Van. I think this is such a cool project in terms of urban design and creative reuse of like a, a long beleaguered section of the city. Um, the one question I have, are you aware of the sensitivities around the name, the Milkshake class? I've heard a lot of you know, chatter about it. When, when this was initially announced, um, I did see a little bit of pushback, and then it seemed like from what I could tell on social media, it kind of uh, fizzled away. And I was honestly taken aback by it because I primarily am a historic tax credit developer that likes to honor the history of a building and, you know, again, with this new construction, tried to incorporate as much history as possible. And so naming it Mill Creek Flats was really honoring uh, mm -hmm. the name of the neighborhood and, and yeah. kind of bringing back the history and more of, more of honoring it than, you know, anything else that came out. So I haven't seen any uh, massive pushback since, you know, that all happened. But I guess the backup plan could be MC Flats if someone has a problem with Mill Creek. Uh, I would just, I thought it was important. Yeah. People seem a little emotionally charged about it, but um, yeah. uh, 
I, I think it's a great looking project. Do you have a range on the rents? Like? Yes, sir. Yeah, um, so these on the, and it depends on a lot of these are studios. The studios are right at, you know, $1,000 to $1,100, depending on if they have a balcony or not. Uh, the one bedroom apartments are in the uh, $1,200 to $1,350 range. Um, and then the two bedrooms are, uh, you know, 17 to $1,800. Um, you know, a lot of that, there's not a lot of new, um, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of new uh, construction here. Uh, you, know, you can look at the stuff in the Grove. Um, South Grand Flats just finished a little bit south of here, and their rents are actually slightly higher than what I just uh, quoted. I'm going to see if they hit on their lease up, but um, we're open with the highway visibility and just kind of everything that's going on with the hospital. Thanks. 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 Can I ask one more question real quick? Is there going to be any street improvements or any way to get to the Metrolink station? Uh, to the Metrolink station, you have to be determined. Um, you know, at this point, you would basically have to go up to Grand and then come down and then go back down. Right. Um, you know, Teresa used to be open across the tracks, and it was closed, I think, due to crime issues. I think those crime issues have subsided. Um, so my ultimate goal would be to... Um, open back up Teresa um, here so it would go all the way through. Sorry, mm -hmm. here I'm pointing at the whole street. Um, and then I think that would allow you uh, to be able to get there a little bit easier. But nothing's definitive yet. I've been working with SLU, trying to figure out where Darts to Park, you know, final plan is going to go and if we can kind of tie into that a little bit. But, um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to echo my prayer <coughs> comments that were made. On, uh, I have to say gratitude is like the most egregious pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I do always well, we say gratia. I've been corrected many times. That yeah. is true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it happened. And it happened. <laughs> <laughs> the other one. How did Detroit pronounce the main street name? Main street name, Gratia. Yeah. Any further questions, Commissioner? Yeah, I just want to have a comment to, to the Mill Creek and why there probably was pushback. And I know when I talk to my mom and different people who grew up in that community, that is her, it resurfaces her feelings because African Americans felt like they were just pushed out of a community and displaced. And so that's probably why you would, you know, hear some pushback to that. And, and until you said to me it's a way to honor, I thought, oh, okay. Because I'm sitting here thinking, why would they do Mill Creek, Mill Creek as well? It, it kind of flips the script, if you will, but I don't know if, if enough people would hear that to be able to understand that. You know, so yeah, the age of the, you have to have an age to understand that statement. Yeah. So just want to share that. With you. Yeah. Uh, all the questions I have were answers. We talked about the, the rental, the the cost. Yeah, yeah that <laughs> files. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, kids are never moving back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, We're in a portable city. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I know. That's what I, know. <laughs> well, I know the nurses, the nurses and doctors of St. Louis, you will be very happy to walk to work from here. All right, with that, I'll entertain a motion for the, um, which one is this one? Uh, 4219. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, previous roll. Previous roll. Any objections? Hearing none. Uh, approved to move forward on the 4219 wide study. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And we dealt, we didn't have, oh, we did have these comments. Mm -hmm. There were some comments. Oh, yes. I, yes. I was invaluable to the study. Uh, Amen. I have your wisdom to say. <laughs> With that, uh, we have 5214, Look Away Drive, Look Away Sport Area. Um, and then delegated items. <laughs> So this last action item on your agenda this evening is for the local weight drive, local weight court redevelopment area. Um, this lighting study and redevelopment plan was actually approved by the Planning Commission in June 2014. Uh, since that time, Habitat for Humanity has built seven of 22 homes across 22 parts of the East um, The proposal before you is to amend this existing lighting study and redevelopment plan for the completion of construction for all 22 homes by uh, June 25th of 2021. Uh, formerly, it was a deadline of two years from approval of the plan, which would have been July 25th of 2016. 
Um, additionally, the proposal before you this evening would allow up to uh, 10 years of tax abatement based on 5% of the assessed value, as opposed to um, a flat five years of tax abatement. Um, so this slide here gives you a bit of a better idea of where the site is located. And uh, the area is designated as neighborhood development area in the associated plan which calls for new residential construction of scale um, and associated neighborhood services. Staff finds that uh, this amended chapter 99 lighting study and redevelopment plan is in conformity with the strategic language plan recommended to you. And if I'm correct, the only thing we're changing is the date of completion. The date and the and the tax mm -hmm. abatement is the other amendment, but yeah. Okay. All right. With that, any questions? Any any questions? I'll just go open hand. I'll start with Commissioner Bison. I'm just curious, were there homes on those parcels before? They were not. They were vacant at the time that the first redevelopment plan was done, and when they were platted. Um, so that's actually the edge of the city line as well. Right. Yeah, I remember this. It was controversial some years ago when Alma Deanna Flowers was the older person and she and Habitat did not see eye to eye and I think it has something to do with the residents behind the project. And she didn't want to do the tax payment, then she did the five years tax payment. <laughs> I find it interesting now that she's not the older woman anymore, they're coming back to amend this. But I'm curious as to what the current model. I didn't see a letter that I missed um, it. Yeah. She's already introduced the bill. She right. did? Okay. All uh, right. A couple of weeks ago. But it, it was drama. So interesting to see it come back. And I'm, I support it. I think Habitat does good work. Yeah, and this is the Habitat. Uh, I will say that I, I have volunteered personally working on those homes with Habitat. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? And I think. Okay. And that's a better project than what they were attempting to do with 22. That's pretty tight space. When I, when I looked at the lots myself, it was you barely had a backyard. Mm -hmm. You know what they were originally trying to do some years ago. Seeing no more questions, I'll entertain a motion on that. Second, previous roll. Any objection to previous roll? So approved. Previous roll on 14. And then I'll just let me give you the last words on your delegated item. Any questions you have to be answered, I'll be able to speak to both Senator Hunter and Bill Bogle and Lillian. What is currently on the property at all? Parking lot, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's a parking lot. Yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, the hotel, which is next to it, uh, which was uh, the Majestic Hotel, was now being converted to a La Meridian Hotel, which is a Marriott product. And the developer, when he bought that property, also bought this parking lot. And rather than leaving it as a parking lot, he wants to build a new hotel there. Really? So the Amoxie Hotel, which is a very trendy hotel for people younger than I. But I've been in one, and they really are fun. But don't let me stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They even let me stay in the lobby for a while. But after a while, they kick me out. Well, they want to do We got a homeless guy. Well, you're messing up the vibe here, so you're too old. So, Dale, what are they going to do for parking? Pardon? What are they do? It'll all be valet parking. Are they going to park at the Jason Hotel lot? I do not know where they've arranged for that valet parking, but they don't seem to see that as Actually, they said so many of their guests now come by Uber or some oh, other method. They really don't have that many people coming by car. That generation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're, they're uh, right there is like being renovated, and all their equipment for that renovation is sitting on this property right now. He said, so if you live right there, you can see that. Okay. There's a uh, sort of a, a, a hoist and all that's on this property. Really tight side, but uh, the. Big enough for a new hotel. Okay. 
with that conversation, our currently our next meeting would be set for. Well, it's set right now for July 3rd, but that is. No, we're not going to have a meeting on July 3rd. Yeah, the day before the 4th of July, we are. So we will be in contact with you at that time. Again, please keep Don, his family, in your prayers or wishes and thoughts uh, at that point. Uh, as if he is, he's not in the office this week, has he been? He's yeah. not. Yeah, I doubt he will be in this week, but she will probably follow up with him next week. She will be home. They're, they're anticipating her to be home by Friday, uh, just to slow in long term recovery. Uh, Commissioner Boyd, will we get a free month during the summer? <laughs> That's August. It all depends on. Oh, it's August? Sometimes in August. Okay. All right. Five, five, yes. I need my free. <laughs> <laughs> With that, any last any new business? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. So move it, sir. I never have a problem getting that done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and with I still, I'm going to have an hour and a half. How about that? Thank you, baby.